Hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I'm Matt. I'm the founder of Makeable. My surname is Keppel. And um, yeah, just something that's kind of funny about me, I guess, is um, one of the charities that I was speaking to who I'm working with on Makeable, it's run by this old guy. He's like 70. And like, you know when you're kind of chatting with people who are a little bit older about stuff that's digital, sometimes you're wondering if they're keeping up with everything. So I was explaining to him how Makeable worked and he was just like, Matt, did you just name this after yourself? And I was like, Matt Keppel, Makeable. Oh my gosh, shame! And that wasn't the case. That genuinely wasn't the case where I was like, okay, so people who are older, they've definitely got some wisdom that I should listen to. Maybe I should have spoken to him beforehand. Um, so like my story is, I guess I really love getting involved with things that seem exciting. And I think my earliest memory of that is when I was about seven in primary school and I had a gang, but we were like, we're not going to be violent, so it's a team. And like the, the thing that we wanted to do was create a spaceship. And so I was like, okay, the first thing we need to do, guys, is get a button that's going to be the ignition button. That's what we're going to use to take off. People brought in all sorts of stuff, like buttons from jackets, like buttons stolen from the VHS. We never got the red button. And I guess that's when I was like, okay, ideas are cool, but like belief isn't everything. We really believed it, but like nothing happened. And so like months, or years further downstream, I remember like when I was about 14 and my sister and I were watching one of those Oxfam commercials and it was like, just give two pounds a month. And I was like, okay, giving two pounds a month sounds cool, but my pocket money, at the time was two pounds a month. So that really wasn't gonna happen. But it, the idea was kind of there in the back of my mind. If I can do something to make the world a better place, then it'd be cool. I just, I just know I can't do it now. Anyway, I got to university, went to Birmingham, studied natural sciences, and I got my loan. This is when you got loans, 4,000 pounds. So I was like, hey, I'm rich, this is cool. And so I heard about an opportunity to sponsor a child. And when I'd been growing up, my parents had been sponsoring a child the whole way. So I was like, okay, now I can afford to do this. I started sponsoring a child, 15 pounds a month. Started getting some letters back about what the child was doing. And about three or four months into it, I just realized that I couldn't afford to sponsor a child anymore. Just because like there were other expenses in terms of like, going out and other things. And it was genuinely frustrating and quite upsetting. But the thing that stuck in my mind was, I'm sure I could get my friends to put in a pound a month each and we could sponsor a kid for a quid. And I don't know if it was because like that idea just rhymes or because I was just feeling like, okay, I could get my friends to do something and I love getting my friends involved with things. So I thought, let's try and make this happen. So I spoke with a few people at my uni and we put together this program called Sponsor a Kid for a Quid, worked with World Vision and did all these posters and they were like, I think it just said, sponsor a kid for a quid. And people who we'd spoken to about it really loved the idea. But when we were actually getting people to sign up, no one signed up. And I was like, this is really weird. Like, the idea is cool. I've got good feedback. And so as I was like, speaking to more and more people about it, they were like, the thing that we love about this idea is the fact that you're getting 15 people, individuals, who don't say no to each other to put together one pound and then you're sponsoring a child. That's really clever and simple. So I was like, okay, let's change all of our posters. And we changed it to... 15 students giving one pound equals 15 pounds, which is food and clothing and shelter. And when we did that, everyone immediately got the idea. And we had like really good take up and the idea then ran for like two years after I even left uni. So for me, it was a really good example of, it's easy to have a good idea, but like sometimes you just need to like pivot and like keep trying in terms of executing it. Cause just cause you get one like knockback, that doesn't mean that it's all over. So, I, was, I finished uni, ended up working in advertising, but my friends were still running the Sponsor a Kid for a Quid thing still at uni. And I remember being on a mega bus on one occasion. Anyone else been on the mega bus, one pound? It's amazing. I was on one of the first mega buses and it was almost like you were in church. People were so excited. It was like, okay, one pound to London. Anyway, be that as it may. I was on the mega bus heading back to a Birmingham to see a friend and I saw a mega bus go the other way and it said, that way. It said one pound intercity travel. And I thought, we've been doing sponsor a kid for a quid. What if we did one pound international projects? And that kind of idea just stuck in my head, like, okay, let's change the sponsor a kid for a quid thing. And so I got in touch with Unlimited and I was like, hey, I've got this idea. I've done sponsor a kid for a quid. What if we switched it up and made it one pound international projects, letting people give to a variety of different things? And so I got a grant, started working on this idea. And because I'd been in advertising, I was able to get one of the agencies that I'd worked with in advertising to work on this idea. And they're used to working on massive projects, like big, like 30K, 40K budgets. 
And it was a really good learning experience because I started working on this and the scope for the project just grew beyond the 5K grant that I got. And so the idea had been there, but we weren't able to deliver anything in the end because I was like, well, well, not, I was like, well, they're like, Matt, actually it's going to cost more than 5K and what we've done so far isn't going to be enough. So it just kind of stalled. And again, there was another example of, okay, had a good idea, tried to take a step forward, but there's been some kind of barrier that's holding it back. And around the same time, having been at uni and thoroughly enjoyed it, I started organizing some events for graduates in London so they could come, when, when they came to London, they got to meet other people in dinner parties. We called it Gradulicious. I like coming up with silly names, I'm sorry. So we did Gradulicious and that was like fun, did that for 18 months. And then it got to a stage where either I was gonna close it or try and grow it. So I went on Dragon's Den and was like, hey, here's this idea, went on Dragon's Den. The dragons were like, we're not feeling your idea. And you know what the dragons are like? They're harsh. So I came off our Dragon's Den being like, okay, dra like Gradulicious isn't really moving forwards and my original like one pound international projects isn't really happening. But around that time, I met a group of people who were like, how can we organize events that get young people giving to different projects? And that was called YTFN or the Youth Funding Network. So I got involved with that and co-founded that in 2008. And five years later, we've just celebrated our fifth birthday. And so it was like, okay, I've ha I tried like an events thing. I tried an online charity thing. And like both of those, neither of them, like everything wasn't quite there. And then by putting it together, we came up with something that really worked. So that was fun. I worked on that, but then Along, along the journey, I kind of still had this idea in the back of my mind of, okay, I really do want to try and do something with this one pound international projects idea. And what I'd learned from my uni experience in terms of sponsor a kid for a quid and various of the other projects I did, even like the spaceship when I was like seven, was that the things that I really enjoyed was when I was working with a team and someone else said like, your, your team will come. And so I started like speaking to some people who were friends of mine but in different areas of work, such as my mate Ola who was at Mars and my mate Ahmed, who I knew from the Commission for Youth Social Enterprise, and being like, okay, guys, I know you're not involved with this project, but I want to get your feedback on it. And it was through pretty much a year of like getting different friends, really harsh feedback on my idea that we then emerged it into what has now become Makeable. And, um, make oh, yeah, Makeable, which is this next slide, you can't really see it. We're launching this this summer. But it's a platform that lets people discover the difference their donation makes. So just to get a feeling, who here gives to charity? And who here can say exactly what their donation has done? Props to you, that's really cool. So for like many of my friends, when they give to charity, they have no idea that what their donations have done. And speaking to other people in terms of the market research we did, there was a real sense that people were saying, I would give more, but I just have no idea what my donations are doing. And so that's the problem that Makeable is solving. We're creating this platform where in the Makeable change store, you can browse different projects according to the causes that interest you. And then each of those projects get involved with what we call two-way donations. So they post updates about what those projects are doing and it's brought to you in your Makeable profile and you can see exactly the change that you've created. And so, I'm really excited to be at a stage where I'm able to launch this because it's been a, a really long journey in terms of having an initial idea, having some success, having something that didn't work. But I think it's very much a case of sticking with your ideas and, and seeing where they take you. So what I'd like to say to you is, if you have an idea, think about where it can take you because it may take you in unexpected places, but definitely don't be afraid to take a step forward and see where something takes you. Thanks.